Hey guys, and welcome to the second plane geometry video. So in this video, we're going to cover polygons, circles, um, and we're going to go from there into our kind of complex figures and solids. So we're covering a lot of stuff in this uh, in this section, but you will find that the last video, which dealt mainly with triangles, is going to be very important to everything that we're going to cover in this video as well. Because even though it might be a complex figure problem, a lot of the times you're going to solve it using triangles, especially special triangles. But in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and let's start up on polygons, because that's our first thing for today. So in the test, you're going to see any number of different types of polygons. They can give you shapes that you're a little bit more familiar with, like uh, hexagons, pentagons, squares. And they can also give you things that you probably aren't as familiar with, like uh, dodecagons. So the first thing to know about polygons is that you can find the number of degrees within a polygon by using a formula. And that formula is 180 degrees times n minus 2. Now, n is the number of sides, and 180 is in degrees. So that'll give you the total number of degrees in a polygon. So degrees in a polygon. If you guys forget that formula, because it's one that, you know, people tend to not, not know so well, um, all it is is that it's 180 degrees times n minus 2, because in a triangle, there are three sides, and yet we only want 180 degrees. So we take away two of the, essentially two of the lines in the triangle and are left with one line or 180 degrees. So for a triangle, it would be 180 times 1, which checks out. And for a square, ooh, forgive my square, it's a little ugly, uh, it would be 180 degrees times 2 or 360. So that's how it works out. So if you guys ever forget that formula, it's okay. All you have to do is use a triangle and kind of count backwards from there. Now the other way you could do it, if it wasn't a really, really big polygon, is you just add 180 each time you add a side. So for instance, I start a triangle, add 180, now I have a square, add 180, now I have a pentagon, add 180, now I have a hexagon. You guys get the idea. Um, if you're trying to find the number of degrees in any given angle in a regular polygon, regular, by the way, means all the angles, all the sides are the same, then all you have to do is take the same exact formula and just divide it by n. So, for instance, in a triangle, uh, we would have 180 divided by 3 give us 60 degrees, which we know works out for an equilateral triangle, and for a square we would have 180 degrees oops, divided by 4, which would give us 90, which again we know is what you should have when you have a square. Okay, our first specific type of polygon we're going to look at is the parallelogram. So parallelograms, um, squares are actually parallelograms, as are rectangles. So they come in a couple different shapes, but the important part, they can even have slanted sides, the important part is that the opposite sides are always going to be parallel to one another, and uh, the opposite angles are always going to be equal. So that angle and this angle are the same. Um, if you're trying to find the area of a parallelogram, all you have to do is multiply the base times the height. And in the case of our first two, the height is pretty easy, uh, labeling it for you guys. In the case of our third parallelogram, you'd have to drop the altitude, which is right here, in order to get your height. But you still just multiply the base times the height. All right, our next one that we have to deal with are trapezoids. So trapezoids also can come in lots of different shapes, but the important parts, or rather the parts that make it a trapezoid and not some other type of quadrilateral, are that two of your sides are going to have to be parallel to one another, and uh, then the other two sides don't have to be. So you will have one pair that has to be parallel sides in order to make it a trapezoid. And um, to find the area of a trapezoid, 
it's a little bit more complicated than a parallelogram, but it's still not so bad. So same idea of base times height. The only issue is in a trapezoid, we've got two different size bases. So we have, let's see, the second one, a little base one and a big base two. And if we drop our altitude, that's how we find our height. So all we have to do to deal with the fact that we have a small base and a big base is just find the average of the two bases. So you would say base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 and then multiply that by your height. So it's pretty much the same idea of base times height. It's just that we need to figure out a way to make the base in between the two bases that exist. Okay, our next type is going to be the hexagon. Okay, hexagon is a six-sided figure. The most important thing about hexagons in terms of this test is that regular hexagons, like the one that I drew, are going to be comprised of a series of equilateral triangles. So if you were to take the center point and draw all the way out, you would have six equilateral triangles. So if I was trying to solve any hexagon problem, I'd pretty much divide it up. You don't have to divide it into all six triangles, but I would draw on at least one of them, and then I would drop an altitude on one of them so that I would have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this would be 30, this would be 60, and this would be 90. I'll we'll just draw an arrow to that. So pretty much all hexagon problems are going to be 30, 60, 90 triangle problems. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a regular hexagon problem. So let's say we know that this is a regular hexagon, and we know that uh, we're looking for x, which is just any of the sides of the hexagon, and then we've got that the line that I drew um, has a length of 10. All right. So if we're trying to find one of the sides of the hexagon, all we have to do is just make a right triangle. Now you can make this right triangle anywhere you wanted. Um, I just chose up there because I already had two of the lines drawn in for that, so it was easier. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we know this is 90 because these two lines are perpendicular, and we know that in, um, when you're looking at a hexagon, all of the angles are going to be 60 degrees. So that means that our kind of outer angle over here would end up being 60 degrees. So I went ahead and I drew the same triangle next to it, so it's a little bit easier to see. But the first thing to do is try to label any sides that we have. So we know that basically twice the height of this triangle is 10. So we can go ahead and we can label this part as 5. We can do that either to the side or on the kind of bigger diagram. So we know that that is 5. The next thing to do is remember our special triangles and try to figure out what side this 5 represents. So it's across from the 60. So if we remember that our sides are x, x root 3, and 2x, we now know that 5 is equal to x root 3. And to make this not confusing, I'm going to go ahead and change uh, what we're looking for to y instead of x, just so that nobody looks over at the x's on the right-hand side and thinks they correlate to the ones on the left. So we know that 5 is equal to x root 3. So then we want to figure out, okay, what is x? Because we're going to have to deal with that in order to find y. So You'd go ahead and you would divide by root 3 on both sides, and then since you're not supposed to divide by radicals, you'd have to multiply by root 3 over 3, root 3 over root 3, sorry. So you'd have 5 root 3 over root 3 times root 3, which would end up being 5 root 3 over 3. So that is equal to x. Now, if we're looking at what y is equal to, basically y, one whole side of our hexagon, is the smaller point, or smaller side, rather, across from 30 degrees, times 2. So all you'd have to do is say, okay, 2 times the smaller side, this one here, or this one here, 
um, 2 times that is going to give us what we want. So 2 times that is just 2 times the x we already figured out. So we know it's 2 times x is equal to y, and then 2 times x would be 10 root 3 over 3 is equal to y. So 10 root 3 over 3 would be our answer in this case. Okay, our next shape up is going to be the circle, which is the second most important shape that's on the test behind triangles.